Hi everyone. I trust that you have seen the title of this video, otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on it. So it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. This video is not suitable for young children. So if you have some children nearby within earshot, you may want to hold off until they are somewhere else where they can't hear what we will be discussing um, and just save this video for another another time, but I just wanted to make sure I give you ample time to turn away before I get into it because I am going to just get right into it. Today's video is on unintentional gaslighting and whether or not the Santa tradition is gaslighting. I came across a survey conducted through the University of Exeter, and they are calling this survey the Santa survey. So there's all kinds of interesting data in this study, including the average age that a child is when they learn the truth, and the average age across the world is eight years old. But what I find particularly interesting about this data is the amount of children who, who reported that they're not children anymore, they're adults, but the amount of adults who reported feeling betrayed and angry over how their parents lied to them. There was 1,200 responses from all around the world, and of those responses, 15% had felt betrayed by their parents, 10% were angry, and 30% said it had affected their trust in adults. Psychologist Professor Chris Boyle, who conducted the study, says, during the last two years, I have been overwhelmed by people getting in touch to say they were affected by the lack of trust involved when they discovered Santa wasn't real. Now, I'm particularly interested in this topic because I myself was one of those children. No, I did not participate in the study, but I am definitely somebody who felt incredibly betrayed by my parents when I found the truth about Santa and I was exactly eight years old. I asked my mother point blank. I said, be honest with me. None of this adds up. I want the truth. Tell me the truth. I can handle it. I just want to know, is Santa real? And not only did my mother lie to my face and say, yes, he is real. She also added and we would never lie to you. So my story is that I wasn't angry that Santa wasn't real. I was angry that my parents lied to me when I asked for the truth. And just like many of the children in this study, um, it, it severely affected my trust, not in all adults. For me personally, it just affected my trust in my parents. Um, and my reasoning at that time was, well, I'm sure other parents didn't lie to their kids when they were asked point blank, is he real? And I can remember growing up all through my childhood, and especially in high school, I can remember being very chummy with my friend's parents because I needed alternate resources to do my fact checking. Um, whenever my parents tried to teach me something about the world, I never trusted it. I had to go to my friend's parents, just find a smooth way to work this topic into the, the conversation organically and see if what they said corroborated what my parents said. And of course it did. 100% of the time my parents were telling the truth. But as anyone knows, when somebody close to you breaks your trust, it's very hard to get that back. And so eventually I did I did decide to trust my parents again, and that was when I was a freshman in college. So I figured, you know, after a decade of them having a perfect record of telling me the truth, I think it's safe to trust them. Turns out I'm not alone, and there are many children here who felt the same way. Some of them may have even been angrier than I was. So the question we want to ponder in this video is, is it gaslighting? 
So throughout this series, we've been examining differences between what I'm calling modern day gaslighting and old school gaslighting. And if we were to just take the Santa piece out of the equation for a minute and ask, is it possible to gaslight somebody unintentionally? Let's just look at that by itself. In the modern day model, the answer would be yes. And an example of that would be, um, believe it or not, modern day gaslighting extends to macro level interactions, the everyday interactions that you and I have with advertising, marketing, social media. So there doesn't even have to be a relationship there in order for gaslighting to take place. So an example would be if a company is um, selling fitness equipment, maybe they are trying to sell gym memberships or diet products. In their advertising, they might say something positive and and encouraging and empowering, like there's no excuse not to be healthy. In modern day gaslighting, that would be considered gaslighting because the comment is not true, but it could make you feel like it's your fault that you're not healthy. And that's not always the case. There are some some people whose health is just outside of their control. And no matter what they do, they're never going to be healthy or physically fit. So in the modern day model, yes, it is entirely possible possible to gaslight somebody unintentionally. In the old school model, on the other hand, the answer is flat out no. It is not ever possible to gaslight somebody in the old school model because the old school model has a lot of working parts and you can't just accidentally orchestrate all these parts to work together like a well-oiled machine. But when it comes to Santa, what we see is this situation kind of straddles both models in different ways. We see parents behaving in an old school gaslighting manner, but their intention is not to gaslight their kids. Their intention is to provide their children with a positive experience. So the last video, we talked about the possibility of gaslighting that brings about a benefit to the gaslightee. The difference with this particular example of Santa is that some of these children were psychologically harmed and the whole Santa tradition did a real number on their trust in their parents or in some cases, adults in general. So is it gaslighting? Now, I don't really know if we can answer this question because I really think it depends on the individual person on the receiving end of that harm. For me, I'm going to say that abuse did not take place. I am the oldest in my family. So my parents, you know, when you're the oldest, you're the, the lab rat, right? Your parents are always experimenting on you and you're the first kid to go through all their parenting skills. So sometimes they get it right and sometimes they didn't. And I can assure you they did not make the same mistake with my brother. When my brother said, I don't believe in Santa, my my parents just left it alone. They were like, we're not going to do this a second time. Um, but I think that it would depend on each individual child. If the parents have a history of lying to the kids or mocking children for being so stupid, maybe that particular child might consider it gaslighting. In my case, there was damage that was done, but I don't for a minute think that my parents abused me. In fact, my mother was very grieved over the years that I constantly had to get a second opinion for everything that she told me. She was very heartbroken that I wouldn't believe her apologized to me numerous times, but you know, I was a very self-righteous grudge holder back then. And I, and I loved holding that over her head at the time. I was still quite angry. Um, but the, the reason she gave me for doing this was because she wanted to give me 
the longest time possible of a season of my life where Christmas held that special wonder um, that that goes away very quickly. It, it doesn't last long. We're only little, little kids for a short amount of time, and then we grow up. And so that was my mother's intention. I don't think it was gaslighting, but other children might think it is. So there are some things that we can do to prevent that unintentional gaslighting from occurring. One suggestion, which I certainly agree with, is from WebMD. And this is Glenn Elliott, PhD. And he says, the important thing is to take your cues from the child and not try to prolong the fantasy for your own enjoyment when they may be ready to give it up. Now, there's also some research from todaysparent.com, and this article cites a 1978 research study which showed that 85% of four-year-olds believed in Santa, 65% of six-year-olds, and only 25% of eight-year-olds. Another thing that I would throw in there is that it's commonly believed that a child's personality is set in stone by the age of eight. So that doesn't mean you have to wait until age eight, but their personality is forming up until the age of eight. And you know your children. You know that some children are more sensitive than others. So if you think your child is not going to handle it well, then you definitely don't want to perpetuate this because that child could grow up and eventually accuse you of gaslighting them. I'm going to post all the links to these studies and articles in the description below. And the Santa study from the University of Exeter is still open. So if you're interested in just participating, even though the research has been done and the article's been written, Professor Boyle is still accepting responses. And I think I might fill it out myself later. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Were you somebody who felt terribly betrayed by your parents? Do you think that it is possible to gaslight a child by telling them a lie and then creating that illusion in the old school style of gaslighting? Gaslighting, or do you think that, you know, this really isn't a big deal? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Jen Guerrero, and this is Poisonous People. Thanks for watching.